I read Reddit a lot, and on some of my subreddits, I see categories of things I'm interested in. People ask questions, and then they start to plague me as well. So I'm going to try to start solving people's problems and help them out. This was posted one month ago by Modeler Man, trying to animate advice on a cuckoo clock. He's, I assume he's talking about the extending arm. Um, a lot of the pointers that he got weren't that great, and he said he's fairly new. So I decided to take it upon myself because I had some time to figure this out. So I looked at cuckoo clocks and I thought that they'd all have extending arms. I just wanted to make sure the mechanism was correct and proper, but that really wasn't there. So I found the extending arm, whatever, that that's what the mechanism is going to be called. And that there are always like a, an end point that is different and a beginning point that is usually, usually goes in and out or it can be locked and you'll see what I mean. So this starts it wide, and the further it extends, these come closer together to push out the whole thing. Um, we can make it that way, but I'm I'm not going to make it that way just because I my solution that works will work the same way and you could swap out the model or whatever. Okay, so we are going to really quickly jump into 3D Studio Max. And I'm going to briefly describe the problem. First, I will show the, my solution, which is different color arms for the top and bottom just to keep it coherent. And then there's two little controllers, one for each of these set of arms, and it's very, very simple. I don't know why this is not working. Wow, okay, something is going on with my program. But right here, look at this. We've got your mechanical arm problem solved. And all this is, is a very, very simple IK solver, the history independent solver. Um, and, and it just works, it's not a problem at all, it's super simple. Uh, I tried a bunch of other methods. One of them was to make little independent IK leg solvers and link those to a null and shrink it down. Um, but you can see that there's some weirdness going on here where the joints are not bending accordingly. So these center pivots are breaking. Um, I tried it with just simple bones thinking you could swap on a model onto each of the bones. Um, and this is also a scaling thing that actually works. The only problem here is that uh, it was a screw up where I ended up rotating the, these pivots. Uh, they were built like this up and down originally, so they crossed. And then I moved them around once I saw that this was actually kind of a solution. But you'd have to make a lot of bones, a lot of IKs, a lot of rigging and stuff to go in there, which is not terrible, but it's not good if you just want something simple for beginners. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to save this and I will just start from scritchity scratchity. So we're going to start from scratch from the very beginning and see if we can recreate what I create, uh, resolve the problem from the very, very beginning. Uh, what I will do is create this with some splines that are extruded into the shape that we want. I'm just gonna quickly draw it in the top view and I'm just gonna rough out a 10 by 100 unit arm. And then I'm going to zero it out, right click on these things, pulls up these dialogues. Same as down here, but this is more useful to me for some reason. Um, and I will be maximizing Alt-W, Alt-W, and I'm just going to make one circle. I will align it, it'll go to the center, that's fine, we want one in the center. And I'm going to make one for here, a copy, and this is going to be negative 50, nope, negative 40, nope, negative 45, okay. 
That sounds good to me. And we're going to do it again. So this will be a positive 45. And now we've got everything all nice and clean. Um, I will keep this as it is for now. But I will convert this to, no, sorry. I will round the corners and I'll just put it five. So it's all the way around. Convert this to edible spline, add on and extrude. And you can see that there's this weird thing going on where it's like a race car track or a tank tread on its side. It's because inside of here, you have two vertices made that were from the rounded edges. You can see two vertexes, vertices, whatever, overlaid. So you just need to weld those. Now you have one. You can weld those. And then you have enough. And now when you put, put it back on here, it should be normal. OK, but we also want to attach these circles. Great. So we've got our shape. We've got this. We've got that. We've got everything we need. I will also pull one of these circles out to be our reference point. So I'm going to sub object, spline, select it, and detach a copy. And this will be called the pivot, pivot ref point. I will right click, copy. Well, don't really need to do that. But I just will. And I will make this a red, just so it's different. OK, so we want our pivots to be coming from the center of our objects. And we're in a different view mode, so it's going to doesn't look accurate. They're actually at the bottom. So we want this pivot point to be in the center of this object. But first, actually, we're selected on this tiny thing. Uh, hierarchy, effect pivot only, center to object. All right, so that has it above the ground and perfectly in the middle. And that's where we're going to refer all these other points to. Hit OK, that's good. OK, and now the difference between my design and yours or the original design or some of these is that they were coming from a single anchor point, like a, a paired. Let me pull up our reference images again a uh, like this so i want to add another half circle so we just need to make a half arm so i will do that by just control v a copy half arm and then just alt q this for isolate and i'm going to delete this spline and this is perfectly in the middle and that's halfway so that's what we want i'm just going to pull these over Check it on the top viewport. That looks pretty good. OK, so this is our half arm. When we exit isolation, we've got our half arm and our whole arm. So I'm going to save all this stuff for now. And this is going to be called Cuckoo Mechanoids or something like that. Who knows what it's called? All righty, so I want to double check everything, make sure their anchor points are all the same. They look right. I'm going to leave these objects and move. I'm going to actually name these long arm, half arm, and pivot reference point. OK, we've got all these objects, which is what we want. I'm going to make these instances. So if we change these down here, these up here will change as well. And I'm going to be working in the front viewport. I will rotate these down 90 degrees so they're facing forward. And I'm just going to start aligning these at 45 degree increments. And if we look here, we'll see that they are not correct. They're 90 or 85 or whatever. So there was some weird leftover bull crap. OK. So I got that. And there's going to be some eyeballing, some whatevering. But whenever you can use precise units, the better. 
Uh, I'm just going to put this at zero. So this is the x, this is the x, put it at zero, and I want this to be like a whole number, so 100. Great. And I'm going to align this guy to this guy. And then we can kind of get a better idea where these go. So it won't be whole numbers because we're rotating, but they should be close enough that it doesn't really matter. And this will be 90 degree rotation. And we're eyeballing again. All right, so here, here, here. This is all good. We'll try to make this longer than the other one. And I got pretty close to good there. And now we're going to terminate this with the half arm. And it's going to be 90 degrees the other way. And you want to make sure that these are pretty exact by using your snaps and stuff. Okay, so we have our chain. And now what we need is we have our point of our chain. We just need a point of our beginning because this anchor points down here. So I will take, I will just make a sphere. Okay, this is fine. It doesn't matter if it's big or small. Uh, I'm going to do a hemisphere, 0.5. Don't see anything, but if you rotate it, you will. And I'm going to shrink this down a little bit, and I'm just going to try to align it the best I can. It will be at our original starting point, which was 100, and the other stuff is more of a mystery, less important, really. Okay, so from here, we are going to do a link up and a test out. First we'll save, because if we screw up any of the IK stuff, we can always come back. And then we'll just link it, and we're going to keep linking it down the chain. Alright. And now to test it, I will just move that, right click to undo, and then my other test is to grab everything, get a little rotation thing, and this looks all normal. Okay, so we'll click on this, which is the end of this chain, do animation IK HI solver, and click on here. Okay, now there's some springiness up, which we don't want. And I'm not sure the best way to get rid of that, but I'm gonna leave it for now and we're not gonna worry about it. So I'm gonna, let me delete all that off. I'm gonna take this and just do a mirror and do a, a copy. And I guess on the Y, not sure exactly. Uh, okay, here we go. Let me just, we have everything selected still, so we're gonna keep it like this. Let me see this base to pivot. I'm just going to have these be different sizes. Okay, so let's try this again. H I. Okay, that one looks pretty good. We're gonna have 
have this one. This is also where having them be different colors would be very helpful. put the let me just delete all these off if in doubt start from scratch like if in doubt ever just redo it animation each I uh, I honestly cannot tell what I have selected it looks like the bottom one A little bit of springiness when it gets close, but that's okay. All right, let's test this. Uh, so it doesn't work as well as the other one did, but that might be okay. I don't know for sure. I would love to be able to figure out what's going on and why it's so screwy. I want to link all these to this reference point. I want to see what's going on here. Uh. Son of a gun. Good. All right, so we've got the bottom animation. HI solver. So like this bad boy. Let's see what happens. I'm not still getting some of that curve. There's some things that are just not the best. provide you the source file of the one that's working better. I don't know why it's working better exactly, um, but you might be able to figure it out. And then to offset these, you can just scoot them over a little bit. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, 
whoa, whoa, whoa. So they're not, they're not stacked or whatever anymore. But if you look here, you can see the mechanism pretty much in place. It gets really gnarly, and I'm sorry about that. I think you might want to do measurements on what you really need this to look like. And I'm sure that there's some little switch that I can flip to clean this up a little bit more. But this is my proposed solution for your cuckoo. So if you're like all cranked up and and I think it'd be like a couple frames of animation so you wouldn't really see it. You'd mostly be seeing this, which is good anyway. So I'm going to keep playing with this and if I find out the problem or a solution, I will explain it. Hope you learned something. If you have any more questions, just give me an email or a call or something like that. Well, probably an email. Send an email. That'd be the best. <laughs> All right. Take care. Okay, so we did learn something about what was wrong with this. I fiddled around with it for a while and nothing exactly fixes the problem. So just ignore what's going on here. This is what you would do, I assume, to try to solve this problem, but it is not a proper solution. Um, and that's probably just one of the limitations of the HI solver. Uh, but I don't know for sure how you can correct this. So you'll see me struggle with this. I'll fight it, but eventually I'll give up and start from scratch. So just copying, pasted these things, they're still instances or whatever, but I'm moving them up and just quickly, quickly aligning them. Maybe it mostly matters how precise these are lined up. Eyeballing it just caused that curve to happen and I believe that that is exactly the problem with doing it that way is that you end up with incorrect information in your artwork. It would have been smart to drop exact anchor points so I could do perfect positioning. Um, and I can still do that by doing this. Oh, come on, just one. See, am I in sub-object mode or am I not? I was also thinking that that's probably why there you don't see very many of these extending arms is because the mechanics of them have the tendency, like they have to be very precise or they'll just fail. And the more you use them, the more the joints would weaken, the more one side would be weighted by gravity or something like that, and you'd get a lot of sway. Um, but uh, it's it an interesting thought. Uh, it, just seeing how complicated this is is probably why you don't see it in the world as much anymore. I think with modern machining techniques, you can get a lot higher quality product, but this was definitely an interesting solution to solve. Right, last one. And then we're going to have one more pivot point. Ah, okay, this could be where the screw up happened. Let me save this right now. Let me do this technique one more time. Detach. Okay, extrude. Okay, so now I'm just going to focus on the arms.
I'm not gonna worry about the whole things. There we go. Okay, so your math has got to be pretty perfect. Which it can be if you drop in these little pivot points as you're making it and then aligning to them. Um, because this is working just fine. According to my eyes, I don't know. I could be wrong, but hopefully I'm not. And these things just have to be linked to the right layer. So it's a big, uh, a huge linking game. Now let's see what happens if I duplicate this whole chain. So there you go, this is pretty good. You've got to keep it precise. You can't quite do aligning eyeballing, it looks like, which is unfortunate, but that's okay too, I think. This little bozo nose I'm gonna make as the master for everything. See what happens. Oh, interesting. I like that. I like that. Not really. I make sarcastic jokes. Yeah, I can't tell the difference between the icons actively. So I look like a big idiot. But hopefully I don't seem like a big idiot. Hopefully you learn something. Okay, and there's like a slight rotation in there. I don't know what that's from, but we don't care about that anyway because we need... them to be a little bit offset. Zoo, 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 zizzer, 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 zizzer. <clears throat> okay, so that's that's pretty darn good in my opinion. I want to find out if it's possible to like bend it back and forth. So I'm going to see how low could you even do this. the The next step would be to figure out how you can offset these but you really can't quite offset them. Oh, I guess you could. You could just add a value up and alternate it down the stack. Alternate plus or minus that degree. <clears throat> okay, so if this is good, well, all this, nope, okay, if this is on here. Ah, there I go again, not getting it exact. And that's why you wanna use these key whatever transforms make sure you see these things so you can move stuff to precise points if you're trying to do precise stuff like this um oh yes the bend the bend the bend i want to do a keyframe on position here a keyframe on position here 
Well, really, I wanted to start small. Maybe I'll just have it go really far out. And now that I think about this, this is a stupid way to do this because I never saved my original position, but that's fine. And the other problem is I'm animating two objects, <clears throat> which is never ideal. So let me delete these keyframes. Let me put a... I'm just going to make a big ugly box at the end of this. Oh no, I don't want to animate anything. So like this could be the platform that the little bird sits on. I don't know what will happen if I move. Yeah, can't quite move anything up or down because it changes the whole articulation of the arm. But you could you could craft something so it looked like it matched a little bit better than this. I'm sure it wouldn't be very difficult. Um, I really just, I like how this looks better. It's like a little finger holding it, and then you could have something come off of here. Flat. So pretty much I'm just copying your idea making it my own or a little bit better. I have no idea helping you solve a problem. Uh, but it is a really good question. I totally think so. Uh, I want to link all of these to, or both of these IK links to this table thing. And before I get any further, I'm just gonna set a keyframe. I want to see what happens when I rotate this. Okay, so this can kind of rotate, which is cool. What about if I scale it? it? Still works, chain still works. That's good, that's good. But now, oops. We'll just start with it extended, it shrinks down. It goes out. On here, a position. Uh, I guess you can't do that. But you can keep it or whatever. Just cut off that beginning. Curve editor. Like this. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, you stupid thing.
I animate way too slowly in 3D packages. And I, whatever. All right, I'm gonna save this off. Let me grab all of this and see if I can put a bend on this. Put it down here. Doing, 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 doing. And if you want to go the other way, you could just duplicate this modifier. You'll have to check your geometry. This is probably not the best way to do this, but it definitely works. So you have a, an example of a cuckoo clock thing. All being controlled by one tiny little object, which is great. I'm cuckoo for doing this, I guess, but whatever. I think it's good. Let's see what happens if I link this to this. Because then I could rotate that whole little arm thing. But yeah, uh, Cuckoo Rig pretty much set up, I don't know. This is long-winded and stumbly, but it worked, and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I'm gonna spend a little bit more time offsetting these panel things to make them work. But, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.